Hi everyone and welcome to episode 36 of the What Not Podcast. My name is Kathy. I'm a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007 and this is a podcast about all the crafty things that I get up to. And that was Rusty that just made a brief appearance. Took a bit of coax him to get him, get him to hop up on my lap. Uh, but a few of you requested to see him, so you'll probably see him wandering around in the background. He's not happy because I've just given the three little dogs a little chew thing each so that they'll be quiet while I'm filming. And I've run out of his treats, so he's kind of cracked it. It's not like he misses out, in fairness, but he thinks he has in this instance. Anyway, uh, let's get on with the job here. So I've got a massive pile of stuff. I've got some big finished objects to show you this week. I've been fiddling around with all bits and pieces, so I've got lots of stuff to show you. Uh, and it's funny because yesterday I was sitting in, up in my new chair uh, doing some knitting, thinking, ah, I don't really think I've got much to talk about on the podcast. Turns out that's a lie. Anyway, as I said, let's get on with it. So first off, I want to thank everybody uh, for leaving such lovely messages after Susan joined us on the last episode. Uh, it was really good. I'm sorry it was a bit of a long one, but you don't have to watch it all in one hit. You know, you can watch a bit here and there and skip through the bits you're not that fussed about. So hopefully you didn't mind that it was a bit longer. I was planning on trying to keep this one a bit shorter, but we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, but thanks to everybody. It's really nice uh, to get the feedback when Susan's on the podcast to see how much you all enjoy her company. Uh, it makes it a lot of fun for me and it also like gives you guys something a little bit different. So I'm sure that Susan will be back at some point. Unfortunately, we're back in lockdown here, which for the first time has affected us uh, just in terms of... <clears throat> I have got a bit of a tickle in my throat. I was actually in bed two days last week. I've had the flu, not COVID, just your standard, your bog standard flu, thank goodness, but it did knock me around a bit. So I might be a little bit croaky, but I, I'm much better, definitely on the mend. Uh, yeah, it's affected us for the first time. My husband had a new guy starting at work. He's supposed to do a training course that's been postponed. Uh, we were not going to get the COVID shots, but after I've had this last dose of the flu and realised how much it knocked me around, uh, I started to get a bit frightened. So my husband's been trying to hunt down where we can get the COVID vaccine, which I have mixed feelings about, but at the end of the day, I'm probably going to get it. Anyway, enough of that dreary talk. Let's talk about the good stuff. All right, finished objects, let's have a look. So, got my glasses, I've got my notes. Uh, I'll show you my book. This book is getting ridiculous, ridiculous. Look at that bad boy. I mean, it is chockers with stuff. So, yep, really enjoying that. Uh, and I have got my notes here now. So, Start at the top. Uh, I told you guys that I was going to have a go at making a quilt. Well, I finished it. And I've got it here. And I've trimmed it all in this nice um, purple colour, which I think looks like quite nice against both sides of the fabric. I did put a little, uh, so I would know when I'd made it. Where is that? I put a little tab in it to say that I made it in 2021 and I just did it's very very basic I'll see if I can move my chair back a bit so I can hold it out to show you 
I haven't got anything fancy. You might see that I've just got my tracky dacks on the bottom half, but that's okay. I'm at home. We're all comfy here. So I just basically had two pieces of fabric that were, I think they were about two to two and a half metres. Uh, and I just lay them up. Well, when I say I did, I got Mill to do it when she was up. Uh, I took it outside and my husband gave me a piece of timber and I drew just basic crisscross on the fabric. So that's the other side there. It's not really that easy to show it to you. But uh, the biggest challenge for this, and I didn't really think about it, was getting this through the machine. Uh, I did it. It has puckered ever so slightly in a couple of spots, but it just adds to the squishiness of it. Um, and it, it really came together in the afternoon, like in an afternoon. And then the next day I cut out all my bias, which I found this really great video on how to cut bias and I'll link that below. So originally I was going to cut a three inch bias. I ended up cutting a 2.25 because that was what the lady on the video recommended and I like to follow instructions. So that's the binding on the edge of it. I'm really happy with how it came up. The, the thing I'm the most happy about is it's got rid of two massive pieces of fabric that I wasn't quite sure what to do with out of my stash, uh, as well as a fairly big piece of wadding. And Mill gave me this lovely uh, purple fabric. So I've been able to use that. And this quilt will be going on the back of my lounge suite in my sort of like a sunroom slash TV room area. So yep, that'll be nice. And I'll be glad to move it on out of my craft room and make space for something else. Because, you know, there's always something else. So my next finished object, uh, as per our discussion last fortnight, I was doing the sew along with the Molly and Mama on Instagram. The Molly and Mama lady. And uh, I finished this, which I showed you last week, including the little bit on the back there with that little tab saying that it's handmade. And our job this last week was to make our little mouse. So my little mouse is all made, super cute. And she's got whiskers, which... In hindsight, I probably should have used like a light brown instead of a grey. I feel like it looks like she's got a moustache. Uh, but look how cute the little tail is. Got a little tail on the back there. So cute. All hand stitched. Didn't do that on the machine. Uh, I went a bit rogue because she's supposed to have her eyes closed. And as you can see, I've done eyes open because she likes to see what's going on. And I did do a little bit of blush on her cheeks there and a little um, bow in her hair or on her ear there with a little button. So, yep, that sew along is all finished now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but um, there you have it, all done. And she is going to run another one soon. So if you are interested in joining in for the next one, I'm not quite sure. I think it's going to be more of an embroidery uh, embroidery along uh, rather than a, a sew along. Uh, she sent me an email about it the other day and I've put my name down for it just to see what it's all about. But if you're interested in doing that, I will link her Instagram below and her, her, I think it's a blog or a website, I'll link that below so that if you want to join in the fun, you can too. So that was my next finished object. And I finished my Magnolia Bloom. It's I literally just took it off the blockers a few minutes ago. It still feels ever so slightly damp, but 
yes it's all finished it's done and uh, to be honest with you guys I'm glad it's done I didn't like this I didn't like knitting it uh, I just wanted to get it finished in the end I I wasn't happy with how the bobbles worked out that much I tried several different techniques to try and get them to sit out properly and as you can see some of them do and some of them don't but I did the same technique with all of the bobbles but it just wouldn't they just would not pop because it because of the lace work it gives kind of an open knit um, there's nothing to support the bobble behind it to keep it out so what I found myself doing was I would knit the bobble row and then on the next row I would try and pick up the stitch that was holding the bobble and knit it together with the stitch that I was currently working on to try and pull it in a bit tighter and as I said in some instances that worked and in others it did not but um, the other thing is and I probably should have tried it on like a dopey Dora I did not but uh, it said once you were knitting the sleeve to knit 32 centimeters and then knit the cuff which I did didn't try it on tried it on after I'd cast it all off and it's about half an inch too short now as it turns out that's how I like to wear my jumpers so that's okay but if you knit this just be aware to try it on I mean it looks nice I do feel like I mean now that it's blocked it's standing out a bit more but I feel like because I've used the darker yarn that the pattern is not really popping as much as I would like it looks better on I will wear it on the next podcast so you can see what it looks like but um yeah so there was that one but it's done and I'm glad I don't know if I'll keep that I've got in mind somebody that I might give that to so I might not keep that one which reminds me I didn't tell you what I was wearing I mean I'm sure you guys all know what this is but uh this is the one that I finished last episode and this is the Sonetto by Yamagara Knits knit out of hippie fibers lovely hippie fibers I love her yarn this is bamboo it fits perfectly I'm really happy with this one uh yeah all in all it was a pleasant knit I love the yarn and I love I really enjoy the detail around the neckline here I think it looks really really nice so yeah sorry about that forgot to tell you about that one and my last finished object that I've got is I finally got around to doing my sewing I have been procrastinating about sewing this dress for about the last month and a half to two months uh, it's a really nice dress I've made it so I can tell you that it's a really nice pattern I did a bit of research before I actually cut it out because I've actually cut the uh, pattern pieces out I'll put them all back in there cut all the pattern pieces out in the size that I thought would be appropriate for me and the general consensus with people that have made this have said that it runs large up to a larger size so for my measurements in this patterning sadly I actually fell, fell into the category of extra large so uh, I went down one size and I thought well you know this is my rough copy if it doesn't work it doesn't work uh, we'll see how we go so I've knit the large and after knitting, um, knitting the large, sewn the large one, 
And after sewing the large, I can tell you that I probably could have even gone to the medium, especially on the bottom half. So the pattern was really well written. However, I did manage to stuff up the pockets a little bit. I've saved it at the 11th hour. It's not pretty on the inside, but uh, it's still wearable. So this was the fabric that I showed you guys that I was going to use. I have had this in my stash for probably close to two years. Uh, I was at Spotlight one day. It's really actually pretty fabric, very light with little flowers on it. Um, I was at Spotlight one day and it was like thrown out on three and a half metres. or It might have even been four metres for uh, like $12 or something. So this has not cost me a lot. And I've learnt a bit from it. I would feel extremely confident going into making this dress out of some good fabric now. A couple of things that I didn't think about, because the bottom half of the skirt is cut into four panels on the front and four panels on the back, and this has got the striping on it. And then I started cutting out and I thought, hmm, should I be trying to match this striping up? And then I thought, yeah, no, no. This is my rough copy, it doesn't matter. As it turns out, it looks okay. So I'll, I'll move back so that I can hold it up and show it to you. So I got, got it all done. So that's, the top half fits me quite well. It's a little roomy, but you're getting away with it. It's the bottom half that I've got a bit of a problem with. And half of it is the shape. I don't know, it looks a little bit creased. But if you look, you can see that the shape of the dress is that it comes out to this point and then it kind of goes in slightly to give it, giving this sort of... Um, this sort of shape. But when you're actually wearing it, that kind of hangs quite nicely. But even still, I feel like the bottom half of this dress has got a lot of fa uh, fabric that I don't really feel comfortable with in it. So I'm going to speak to Julia. Unfortunately, uh, we were supposed to have our coffee get together uh, this Friday. And due to the current lockdown, of course, all of that's been cancelled. So that's a little bit disappointing. I am tossing up whether to take this dress and show it to Julia because she's a very good sewer and there's some pretty rough edges in this dress. I don't have an overlocker. However, I did do some research and I'll show you. I found a foot in my sewing machine kit that sort of turns the edge of the fabric over and you can finish it off. It's not as neat as it would be if you had an overlocker, but I think it's okay. So that's what that looks like. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it does the job. It, it's secure and it doesn't have the really rough edges. But because there were some spots where I had to unpick and unpick a couple of times, the edges of the fabric got quite frayed and it was really hard to feed them through that particular foot. So, yeah, some of them are a bit dodgy. In, in particular, say, the pocket area. Let's have a look at that. I'm only showing you because Julia might watch this and it can prepare her for the shock and horror of this this bodgy finishing. Um, I will do a much better job next time round now that I know what I'm doing, but I, I think you can see there that some of the edges look a, a bit rough and ready. But all in all, uh, it came together. I, on the outside, the, the mistake I made with the pockets was purely my own fault. I did not read the pattern properly and forged ahead and did the wrong thing. But I'll show you on the outside, I think they actually sit pretty nicely. So that's where the pocket is. 
and I think it looks pretty streamlined. It's kind of hard to show actually. There, you can sort of see, oh, there we go. It's sort of st very streamlined, so it's got two pockets. So the couple of things that I need a little assistance with next time round, I think, on this, uh, I didn't have enough fabric to do the bias, so I did a contrast bias on the neckline and the sleeves, which doesn't really matter. But I think you can see on the neckline there, there's some t ever so slightly a bit of puckering. I'm not quite sure why that happened. And when I'm wearing it, this neckline sits forward ever so slightly. So I don't know whether I need to pull my bias a little tighter when I'm putting it on next time or not. And when I've got this dress on, the pockets are too low for me. So I need to move the pockets up the dress about an inch. And I feel like the bodice of this dress is a little bit too long for my torso as well. So I need to find out how to uh, remove anywhere between a half an inch to an inch in that bodice section. So, yeah, there's a few things on it. Um, I could definitely wear this down the street today and be perfectly comfortable in it, but the whole point of making your own clothes is so that they custom fit your body. And they're just a couple of the little things that I've noticed with this is that uh, I would like to streamline the skirt section and reduce the the length of the bodice. But as I said to you before, this is striping, like it's got the patterning in it, and I, I feel like it still works. Like you can actually see that diamond pattern in the center there. Um, that's kind of the shape of the bottom half of this dress. But if you... Just for, for reference, for size reference, the widest part of the skirt, where is it here? So I'm just trying to straighten it out completely. So my shoulder, it's almost twice the width. In fact, it's probably slightly more than twice the width of my shoulders. So it's a lot of fabric, um, more fabric than I would like. But all in all, pretty successful. I was happy. So yeah, that's my Eva dress. And I am planning on making another dress. So we'll have a look at that. So after I finished making that dress and I thought, I really liked the pattern. I was really happy with the pattern. And I thought I'm gonna get online and see what other dresses they do. So, I mean, this is really in the for me, from me section, but since we're talking about the dress, I will show you, I've picked up another pattern and I got it from the same place. So that's where I've bought these bits from. Tessuti. Tessuti Fabrics. Tessuti? I'm not sure. One or the other. So I have bought this pattern. And this is called the Melinda dress. And as you can see um, from the picture on the back, it's slightly, it's got the, the box pleating at the front and it's more streamlined on the skirt. I'll just, I've actually been online. There's a lady online that does a full tutorial on the whole, no, this one, I was going to show you by comparison the picture on the back, but this one doesn't have the picture on the back. So this is what I'm going to make next. And I'm not going to use the good fabric that, um, Julia has given me yet because I'm going to make my mind up between the two dresses which one I'm going to use the good fabric for 
So I went into my stash and I've left it over there. So just hang on a second. I'll just go and grab it. I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that I'm using up quite a bit of fabric out of my stash at the moment between the quilt and that dress. And uh, I found this fabric, which I sh I'm pretty sure I showed you guys this fabric last year on the podcast. And it has kind of a, um, a linen-y feel to it. So this is the fabric. Really pretty. And... I don't know whether the box pleats in the front will show up with this fabric, but I'm not fussed. I, I, I mean, it's sitting there doing nothing. I am going to have a go at making that Melinda dress with this fabric. So this has got some really nice little details on it, this fabric. I don't know if you can see the little butterflies and this, that ready color I really like that color so I think that'll be a pretty dress and I feel confident that making the Melinda dress after making the Eva dress it will be a lot more crisp in the finishings so yeah so there's that so that's on the agenda for me in the next two weeks and I think that will be interesting um, just to see the difference in the pattern. But when I was going through my fabrics, oh, I have got no business buying fabrics. Having said that, Spotlight having a sale. Who was online having a look at all that stuff this morning? Who put stuff in their cart? Didn't pull the trigger though, so there's that. <laughs> I'm not saying that I won't pull the trigger though, so don't judge me. But... I, as I said, I was going through my stash and I found this. This is a dress that I have cut out. I've actually, it's got to have a zip in it. Maybe that's what made me stop. It, I mean, it's so creased because it's been chucked in a bottom drawer. But I started making this dress. The fabric is really pretty really nice like a blushy pink dusty pink color I mean it's got that I've gone to all the trouble of doing all that sharing on the body body there and I've even uh, cut out the lower skirt and the sleeves I've got that all cut out screwed up in a drawer tell it well semi folded slash screwed up in a drawer I've got all the skirt bits cut ready to go and this found the pattern as well and I've got it all in a little gauze bag which makes it look like I'm organized but not not, not that organized uh, and this is the Amelia tea dress I'll just take out the cover not all the pattern pieces and it's a really nice sort of I don't know, 1960s style dress. It does have a zip in it, so I'm I'm thinking that that's what has stalled me on it. So here's my plan. I'm going to make the um, the I've forgotten the name of it already. Look at me, the Melinda dress, and build up my confidence a little bit more. And once that's a raging success, let's see if that happens, then I am going to try and finish this dress. So I might have two dresses to show you next episode. We'll see. I'm holding myself accountable now because I'm mentioning it. But uh, I think this would be a comfortable dress to wear and flattering because it would cinch in at the waist, um, which for me is probably the smallest part of my body, uh, but it's got the shirring, so it wouldn't be tight. You know, you'd still be able to eat your cake and drink your coffee and be comfortable. So, yeah, let's see if I can't get that out of my stash as well. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Now, what's the next thing I've got here on my pile? I've got my watercolours, so there's a few things to talk to you about there. I've got two finished ones to show you, which if you're following me on Instagram, you've seen them. I've got some funny light coming in here. Let me put it on this side. The light's not the greatest for showing my watercolours, I've decided, on this podcast. Um, but this was a commission piece, and I'll put the picture next to it from what my reference was. So there's that watercolour. So I've got to pack these up today and get these two out. And this lady in particular has been waiting a little while for this one. So, and this is her moggy. So this, this picture is going to Europe. A lady uh, in Europe asked me if I would paint this for her. And I do have a special collaboration coming up. It's a secret. So you will find out a bit more about that later on. Pretty exciting. Uh, that'll be around October. So here's a little teaser for you. And something else that I've been doing in my watercolouring, a lady wanted to buy this and I was like, oh, it's just my rough, rough copy on my page. I have been just practising my watercolour flowers and each day I paint one or two new flowers on this page, trying a few new t different techniques. I don't know if you can see there. I've painted green and then added salt as if it's like where the salt pushes the paint away. It creates like tiny little dots which look like tiny little flowers. But what I wanted to tell you is if you're interested in painting the flowers, and you'd like sort of a reference guide. I have shown this on the podcast before, but I use it quite a bit and I wanted to show it to you again. Uh, and it's the A to Z of flowers. So the, the reason I like this is I wouldn't necessarily paint exactly the way they've painted, but you might think, well, I've painted a daisy and I know what a daffodil looks like in a sunflower, but I'd like to, you know, paint some different flowers. It gives you a reference point for flowers. So I'm just going to see if I can find the page. So it has this page, which is a picture of every single different flower that's in this book that it shows you how to paint. So you've got those those and what it does is let me just pick one when you find the flower so say you want to paint that flower it gives you on this side a guide to the colors that they've used and then just down the bottom there it's a step by step and if you don't feel confident it's a nice big picture there there I should say you can trace that and transfer it onto your watercolor paper and have a go at it like that but I find this book very handy the steps in it are very clear it's got some really pretty flowers in it to paint look at those they're nice all sorts of things and it the other thing that I like is it tells you about the flower at the top there. So if you don't know too much about flowers, you can learn a little bit about them as you're painting them. But, uh, yeah, I like that book and I use it quite a bit. Plus, it's just a nice book to have as well. So, yeah, I've been busy with my watercolour painting. I have picked up my game a little bit. I did do a couple of tiny little... I showed you the other week that I got this little journal uh, and I've done a few tiny, tiny little paintings in that just as the mood strikes me. So I, I think I showed you that I'd done that one on the last podcast. Well, when I wasn't feeling too well, this is what I like to do, just fiddle around. I don't know if these are going to show up that well. There's a little, 
a little scene there with some birds flying away. I've done that one. One of the flowers out of the book. Just some tiny little dainty daisies. It's nice just to have it sitting there. There's a little a jug with some flowers just to make it make you feel cheerful. And I'll just show you one more. I don't think there's any more than that. I think that oh no, there's two more. I'll just show you one more anyway. So another little scene with a little duck on the water. I hope that's showing up all right there. But yeah, it's a cute little little journal to have. I really I just like I just like to have it really. It's just something makes me feel arty. <laughs> makes me feel artistic. So yep, I've got that there and been fiddling around with that. Now, uh I've kind of lost my focus of what I was doing here. I need to regroup. What am I talking about? Watercolours. Whips. I'm still talking about my whips. Alrighty. Um, I've told you about the dress. Oh, my om shawl. So I have got two new cast-ons, even though I should be knitting the advent. Very naughty. I've decided, I've made a decision that once I finish knitting this jumper, that I'm going to stop knitting jumpers for a little while because you want to see my wardrobe. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go through that, going to give some of them away and clear a bit of space. But I've got two special birthdays coming up in September and in November. And there's a couple of things I'd like to make for those people. So one of them is my uh, the Beagle that I've been talking about for 100 years. I want to get that done. And I would like to get one of the little tea room bears done for the other person, but we'll see. But having said that, I have cast on the shawl, the Om shawl, which I'll put a picture of that up here. And you can see what I'm heading towards. I made some pretty good progress on it. It's um, really a relaxing knit. I, I just... Shawl knitting's where it's at for me. I, I, I don't really wear shawls that much, but I just find them so enjoyable to knit, just that, you know, you don't have to worry about decreasing or increasing or is that length right or not right. Um, they're usually interesting because they have lots of different patterns and stitches, well, depending on the shawl that you choose. But this one has got brioche in it. And this is where I've gotten to. So it needs good blocking, which I'll do at the end. It's got the, I'm just finishing off a, a section of the mosaic knitting down the bottom there, which is very satisfying to do, the old mosaic knitting. And... I am using only one, I'm using two balls of wool, so there's the cream, and the other ball of wool that I'm using is a sock yarn, and that was it. I am a little bit disappointed. I thought it would be a little bit more pink, but it's turning out that the green is really the colour that's showing through on it, probably mainly because of that section there. But... All in all, I like it and I'm pretty happy with it. And I did find another couple of these balls in my stash so I could tell you who that yarn was from. So I've actually got these as well by the same person. And they're Debbie Bliss and they're the Rialto Luxury Sock. I can't, I can't tell you what colour that one is that I'm using it because the label is long gone but uh, it's a 75% wool 25% polar made it is a super wash wool uh, this this one is color 10 and as you can see it kind of variegates through the colors um, really nice actually really nice colors in that one and this one is color 6 
and it's got the lovely berries and blueberries and purples and it's got a little bit of like a golden color through it as well for a pop so yeah they're really pretty i got these off lovecraft a long time ago and um i think that i think this one actually would have looked nicer in the shawl in hindsight the colors running through that but i'm not fussed i still like it and i will keep knitting that so Yep, so that's my Om shawl, and I will keep working on that, and I'm keeping that in my lovely rose bag that I made out of the beautiful fabric that Julia gave me. Thanks, Julia! I love it! So there's that. So that's my one of my cast-ons. Look at me, I'm trying to clear the decks as I go along here. You wouldn't know it if you could see this place, but yeah. And my second cast on, I've got this in my little yarn bowl that I made. And this is called, let me get it right. This is called the Cristello sweater uh, by Knitting for Breakfast. And also, too, that Om shawl is knit by, it was designed by Crazy Claire. Her name is Crazy Claire. But as usual, I'll put all the details below. So this is a picture of what I'm working towards. I haven't really got much done because I literally cast this on. When did I cast this on? Yesterday, I think. Did I cast this on yesterday? Yes, I think I did. So this is all I've got done. You can see the lace is just starting to come through there. I have made some alterations on this, which I'm hoping are going to be okay. I noticed on the pattern that the neckline was quite big. And I don't mind if the neckline is a bit larger at the back, but I don't like my... On this one, this jumper, I'll show you the back, comes up nice and high, right up. I like that. I like that height. Um, so what I've done, and as I say, I hope I haven't messed it up, I cast on the neckline for the smallest one. It only comes in three sizes, but it's got a lot of positive ease built in. So um, even though it's only three sizes, it's fairly inclusive. But um, I cast on the size for the smallest jumper, so the smallest neckline and knit up until there's a increase row where you can see those eyelets. So I did that increase row. And then as you can see, I've done a fair old chunk of short row shaping in the back of it. So that's the center back there where my um, stitch marker is. So you can see there the depth of the uh, short row shaping that I've done. And then what I did is just before the lace work started, I worked out how many stitches I was short for the medium size. And I did it, it was only like, um, I think it was 20 stitches or something like that. So I evenly spaced my increasing of the stitches around just before that lace work. So you can't actually even see the increase because they kind of hide in the tip of that lace work. And then what I'm thinking about doing is once I get down to the body, have I dropped a stitch there? Oh no, I haven't, it's just split. Uh, once I get down to the body, I am thinking about uh, increasing again there to the largest size so that it's very roomy in the bottom. I haven't 100% haven't decided to go ahead with that. I'm just going to play it a bit by ear and see because uh, a lot of people have knitted in anything varying from a finger, light fingering up to a DK. So even if you look at their pictures, it's kind of hard to gauge what it's going to be like because people have knitted in 
in cotton and all sorts of things. So this is my yarn. So my lace work's going to be in this pink. It's a bit messy. In this pink, very pale pink. And then the body of the jumper will be in this sort of pinkish reddish gray color which is also some yarn that I dyed up so that's out of my stash yeah I think that'll look nice I was going to do a little test swatch to see how those colors look knit together didn't do that just started knitting that's how I roll so yeah I, I, I'm really enjoying that uh, and we'll see how it goes but the lace works pretty intuitive. It's easy to memorize the row, quite repetitive. So um, looking looks as usual with lace, looks more complicated than it actually is. So I'm enjoying working on that. Probably do a bit more of that this afternoon. Now, what else have I got here? Yep, so they're my only two knits at the moment. So that's my my shawl and that garment so that's it but um, I have been working on a few other little projects and I'm into the scrapbooking well I say I'm into the scrapbooking I haven't actually apart from my my show notes I haven't done scrapbooking before uh, and I seem to be enjoying buying stuff for it haven't done a lot of it yet though but I will um, and I've been watching this lady, well, a few different ladies, and I will link anybody that I've watched in the show notes. I'm trying to remember the lady's name that I saw that did this. I think it was. So I was watching a lady, and her name is Treasure Books, and she's in Australia on YouTube. And she was showing how she ages regular cards so I bought these a while ago off eBay I'm pretty sure it was eBay I'll see if I can find them and link where I got them from and they're just like retro cards of ladies the ladies in them are more your regular size roundy ladies rather than super super skinny but I just thought they were fun cards and quite liked them. And she shows you how to age them. So I thought I would show you what I did. The first thing I did was I just ran a spot of glue here and there on them. She recommends that you don't run it over the main part, just sort of to the edge. So I've done that with these. These are some sample ones that I had to show you of the stages so that already makes them look a little bit older and then what I did was I got my ink pad and I put a little bit of brown ink around the edge of it to make them look older and then I had some used tea bags yeah they were just I used them to dye something else which I'll show you in a minute and um, I left them outside on our table and let them dry out. Once they dried out, I carefully cut the top off them, tipped the old tea bags out and just dusted the bag off. And then using some water and PVA glue, I glued it directly over the top of the image. And as you can see, it makes them look like old fashioned cards then. My plan is to use these in my journaling, junk journaling, although this lady doesn't like to call it junk journaling. She likes to call it treasure books, which is fair enough because they're full of treasures. And so these are the ones that I finished. So basically you're going from a, a crisp white card and you age them to that level. So yeah, I liked doing that. I thought that was fun and I was really happy with the result. And 
you know, as I do, might have gone online and bought a few different packs of cards so I can have some different pictures and probably be doing some more of those. So that's kept me out of trouble for five minutes. And then while I was on it, while I was looking around, I noticed that a lot of people use the tea dyed paper in the junk journaling. And I thought, you know what? I've got tea bags. I've got water. I can, I, I'm going to have a go at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, had a go at that. Went nuts. I pulled pages out of notebooks that I had. So that's got a little bird on it. And not that the tea dyeing is showing up very well, but that's been tea dyed. And then I noticed that um, a lot of people were buying the old, I don't know if you guys remember them from the 70s, but you used to be able to get tea, uh, tablecloths that were like a plastic that looked like lace so that they were, I suppose, easy clean. And you can still buy something similar to that, but you've got to be careful because they have a PVC backing on them now. So it defeats the purpose if you want to get sort of um, a staining on the paper. And so I had a look around and the ones that I could find, well, they're not cheap. And this is just a cheap activity that I wanted to do. Uh, and then I thought, I wonder why I couldn't use stencils. So I've got quite a few stencils, this sort of thing. I've got a lot of these different ones in this size. I've got some slightly bigger ones that I used to use when I was dyeing up the sock blanks. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use those and see how they come up. Well, they came up pretty good. So that was a larger one that I've got. So my plan is that these will be folded in half and I will be making some pages for books and then decorating them. That's the big picture anyway at some point. But some of them I just threw down a little bit of extra tea just to stain them up a bit, to make them look old. Um, there's one that I put all the, like, th I was holding the page down because it was windy the day that I was doing it. I put the stencils on and then I had a piece of wood that I was putting over it and the wood's actually le left a mark. But I don't care. I actually quite like that. I'll, I like um, that little bit of extra interest. And you've got to sort of imagine to yourself that once that's in a journal and you're decorating the page, it just adds to the interest. So these will be pages in the journal. But as I said, went a bit bananas making a thousand pages for this epic journal that I'm well look I'll probably make more than one but that's a nice one that that was some little flowers they aren't they're, they're not showing up terribly well and then I had some coloring books so I ripped some pages out of coloring books and tea dyed those I tried to get pictures that were more this way than that way because uh, at the end of the day, if they're going in the journal, I was trying to think about what you would actually see on the page. So that would be the front and that would be the back. That's her tail. So, yeah, I was trying to think about that sort of thing. Some of them I just dyed very plain. All sorts of things. But I won't show them all to you. We'll be here forever in a day. But there's an, just another one of the sea, underwater sea thing, colouring book. So that was a white page out of a colouring book. So I just ripped out and threw in, in the... So the way I did it was I got my baking dish and I made up about two cups of tea with about... I probably put about 10 tea bags in it, 10 or 12 tea bags. And then I also learnt from doing my research that you've got to reduce the acid in the tea bag, otherwise it deteriorates the paper after a while. So I added a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda, which eliminates the acidity in the tea and will mean that the paper won't be damaged. 
So then what I did was I just put all the paper in the baking dish. I, I did each piece separately because I found that if I had, like say I'd got the printer paper and I put say 10 pages in and I just dropped them in the baking dish, the middle bits didn't get wet. So you do have to go through, it's just quickly and just put each piece in by itself. And then I left it in there most of the day. So I did that probably about eight o'clock in the morning. And then at about three o'clock in the afternoon, I went outside. I've got a, a big table outside. I put a towel down and then I just did a few pages at a time. So I lay a few pages out, as many as I could fit on the table, put my stencils down. In some cases, I got the tea bag and just dabbed it a little bit over the stencil to make some a bit darker. I was trying to, like, just playing around. I think that's probably a bit too dark. Um, this was the first batch that I did and they turned out pretty dark. So the second batch, I made them a bit lighter. So you can see they're a bit lighter. And literally they take about 10, 15 minutes to dry if, if it's a warm-ish, windy day. And then I just go out and do the next batch. And then, yeah, got them all done. So needless to say, that's been keeping me out of trouble as well. So I liked doing that. I've actually, I did buy a couple of stencils. But I got the A4 size and I bought ones that are actually... That, so they'll cover the whole page. So that will get rid of these. I won't end up with those sorts of lines on it. And some of the designs I got are lace. So to me, that's just the same as, as if I bought the expensive tablecloths and you can pick up stencils from Ally for about, you know, one or two dollars. So, yeah. So, yeah, been working on that. Now, let me just see what I'm up to here. Okay, now something else that I came across when I was going through my colouring books, which I've sort of got on the shelves over here, um, trying to find bits of paper that I was prepared to rip up to put in my tea dyeing, I came across a couple of these books and I went nuts for these a while ago. And I was, I thought I would show them to you because I thought if any of you are in lockdown and feeling a bit bored and out of sorts or whatever what I used to do is I used to do these a long time ago I haven't done them for ages um, but I used to listen to my audio books and just have my coloring pencils and stuff around and go to town and it was it's a really nice way uh, that you don't have to be overly creative or think too much and you end up with something interesting so um, I think I did every single book that ever came out, but I've only bought two to show you. Uh, but this was one, and as you can see, they're a fair old size. You might, you guys might have seen these, I don't know, but I thought I would show you. And what it is, is that each picture is, you, you choose, like, so it might have numbers one to six. So you choose six colours and it gives you a little, um, in the front of the book, it tells you how to choose your colours uh, and, and what, what's going to look best. And it's basically a colour by number at that point. So you just find all the ones and you colour them all in one colour, find all the twos. And before you start, you can't really see what the picture's going to be. And then as you colour it in, I think I've done all of them in here. I was going to try and show you one that hadn't been done, but I'm pretty sure now I've done them all. Look at that guy. <laughs> I mean, it's big. You need a fair bit of desk space for it. And if you're not into animals, there's some other ones that they have. So they've got um, works of art they've got zoo animals or they've got famous people different ones and color or shade uh, the mysterious quirkies to reveal the fabulous felines 
So as I say, at the beginning, it's just a whole heap of bubbles. You can't see what the picture's going to be. And then as you colour it in, it just gradually starts to pop out. So um, I know these books are still available, even though I, I must have done these four years ago. Um, yeah, but I will link where I got them from and I'll find I'll find them. And if you want them, I, and I don't think they are that expensive. I think you could pick them up for under $20 and just something fun to do. And then uh, the other one that they do is a dot to dot. Now this is a slightly more challenging thing. Um, and it seems like when you look at it, you think, oh, that's going to be impossible to do. But once you start, you get into a bit of a rhythm and you can kind of see where it's going and you can find the next number. Some of them go up to, I'll just see if there's one that I haven't done. Look, there's not because I went nuts for these things. I loved doing them. I've done every single one in here. Yep. Yeah. So it's number, you can't see what the picture is again before you start. And you don't take your pen off the page and you just go from one up to whatever number and you end up with, it's a bit hard to show, it's so big. Mm. Whatever number. Uh, it's just, it is a relaxing thing to do. So, as I said, I will link where I got them from if you're interested. I, I never coloured these in. These were just the dot to dot by numbers. And where's my glasses? I'll see if I can see what's... So, obviously, you start at one, but this... What's the highest number I can see here? 390... 450... I think four nothing over 500. So that one goes up to the high 400s. So you start off at one and you just basically follow the bouncing ball till you've done the whole thing. So this one, in this one actually I can see numbers like 760, 865. Yeah, so it goes up to some pretty high numbers, but it's, it sounds hard to do, but once you start doing it, it's not hard and it's fun. So, yeah, if you haven't seen those before and you're interested, I'll link them in the show notes if you want to grab yourself one. And also, they make a nice gift. We gave one to Mark's Aunty Rhonda and she loved it. We gave her the colouring in one because she's a big fan of colouring in. But, um, and I'm pretty sure I gave my dad one. I don't know if he ever did it. I don't know if he did or I did or not, but I think I might have. I don't know. But, yeah, just something different. See what you think. Let me know. Let me know if you've done one. So next up we've got Ravelry Revealed. And this is kind of an extension on last episode uh, because... As you guys know, I showed you that I'd bought the yarn for uh, Mutty's Blueberries, which I will put on the screen here. <clears throat> and I wasn't really happy with the colours and things like I had bought. Anyway, after the podcast, Susan raided my embarrassingly messy full yarn stash. And she started pulling everything out, horrifyingly, but she did. And she came across this bag. I don't know why I buy so much yarn. It's ridiculous. Um, but I might have even actually bought some more this morning. I can't, I can't help myself. I'm terrible. So what did Susan pull out of my stash? This is a Malabrigo Rios, which was the same as I showed you last episode. This one is called Whole Grain. It's really nice. It's got some interesting colours through it. The skeins are a bit messy, but at the end of the day, once you wind them into a ball, it doesn't really matter. And Susan said to me that she thought that this might be a better choice instead of the orange. 
just pulling out another because that looks actually looks a bit brown but no they're all the same got that sort of pinky gray color so after having a discussion about it I've kept the other the colors for the yolk area out so that I can hold them together if I can let's see if I can and you can tell me if you think that that would match <clears throat> so the main part of the jumper would be in this gray color and the yolk would be in the peach blue and that magenta color and we kind of thought that that might be a little bit more to my palette my color wheel so yeah so on Ravelry Revealed this week I'm showing you the same jumper that I showed you last fortnight but with potentially this color option instead I actually like this color can you tell <laughs> so yeah I think it's it's a nice color this smells like vinegar do they all smell like vinegar no, that one doesn't anyway I've got ridiculously I've got one two three four one two three four five six seven and I think there's another skein up there I've got eight skeins of that I think that I originally bought this to knit the Hokey Locatelli boxy the one that she did in the eight ply I think that's what I bought this for and to be honest let's face it there's probably enough for me to knit both of those garments with this slot so yeah just a quick Ravelry revealed this fortnight but that's my Ravelry revealed more yarn All right, so now we're moving on to the For Me From Me section. So if you find that's a little bit of a trigger for you and you don't want to watch that, that's okay. I have actually got a gift for Mill because it's Mill's birthday next, well, this, this month, next week. So I know that you won't pay any attention to me, Mill, but if you want it to be a surprise, probably switch off now. But I know you probably won't. Anyway, so thanks for joining me. If you have only come for the main part of the podcast, um, I was a bit all over the place. Uh, hopefully my throat will be back on track by the next episode and uh, all will be well in the world and hopefully uh, we'll be off lockdown. We will see. On the upside, the weather is starting to fine up. The sun is out during the day. It's a nice sunny day today. It has been a nice sunny day every day this week. It still gets cold at night time. I've still got my fluffy sheets on uh, on the bed, but uh, and I have been putting the heater on, but not as much as usual. So uh, I like the warmer weather, and I'm looking forward to the warm weather coming. So that's that. I don't think I've got any other news. Mr. Whatnot's on the mend. He's having a few issues at the moment. Um, they've found a few problems. Well, in particular, one problem uh, has come to the surface. When he was in hospital, they were running a few tests and something's come up. So we're a little bit worried about that. He's got to go off and see specialists and uh, take that to the next level. So we will see how that goes. But... Um, it's a little bit of a worry, but it is good that they've picked it up in while he was in hospital. But his ribs, he's, he, he had four broken ribs. His ribs are healing. He's still in a, a bit of pain with it. He broke three ribs up the back and one at the front. It's the ones that are at the back that are causing him the most problems. Um, but he's at work today. He wasn't supposed to be. He's going to be at work until the 18th because the guy that works for us can't start because of COVID. He can't do the training. He can't start until the 18th. So Mr. Whatnot has to uh, work till the 18th. So he's battling through at the moment. And surprisingly, he's not the kind of bloke that complains very much. He never, never complains about it. Um, when he gets home from work, he always says to me, 
is there anything I can do? And I just think, why don't you go just go and sit down, mate? But that's that's what it's like. But he'll be okay and we will work everything out. Life throws stuff at you all the time, doesn't it? We all we all manage to get through. Um, I remember my dad said to me once, you know what, at the end of the day, there's no point worrying about it because you've made it this far, haven't you? You'll make it a bit further, don't worry. So that's the philosophy I'm going with. We've made it this far and we will make it a bit further. So hopefully we'll have some good news in that department in the next few weeks, but we will see. <sighs> Bit of a Debbie Downer, wasn't it? Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> Other than that, we're all happy. We're all well. We're all safe. Uh, we're all well fed. Uh, my sister dropped off a lovely cake the other day, and I told my husband that she'd bought it he did not even get one piece. Me and the dogs ate the whole cake over a period of two days. It was bloody delicious. I asked her what it was. It was a pumpkin and cinnamon tea cake. And I'm going to put a picture of it on the intro or the tiny bit that was left that I thought, oh, I better take a photo of this before I eat it all. I haven't had homemade cake for years. I used to make them all the time. I'm, I'm actually a pretty good cook, but I don't cook it because I eat it. So I don't cook it, but she did drop. It wasn't a full-size cake, in fairness. It was a half-size cake. <laughs> Still managed to eat it all. But thanks, Tess. Delicious. All right, let's move on. Uh, we'll see you guys that aren't hanging around in two weeks. But um, for the rest of us, let's see what I've been buying. Okay, for me, from me, let's see what I've been buying. Now, I've got a couple of things and I'll show you what I've bought for Mill for her birthday, first of all. And I bought this from an Etsy seller and the Etsy seller is called Oh, the places we go shopping. And Mill loves a nice mug. And this lady does a beautiful job of painting them. I don't know if all the detail is going to show up on that. But Mill likes a bright colour. And I picked this one out. She's even got little, so much detail on it all hand painted and this is a hug mug so I've got to be careful that I don't drop it I don't I, I actually broke a plate yesterday when I was taking the photo of the cake I got one of my nice plates out it's going to be all fancy put it on the plate take the nice photo for Instagram drop the plate story of my life at the moment this is a hug mug so it's designed that you can cup your hands around it and keep your hands warm I've left the packing in there because I've got to pack this back up to send it back to Mill there's her card it was probably slightly more expensive um, I want to pay say I paid $70 for this uh, it's more than I'd normally spend on a mug but this is for a birthday present for a special person so I kind of justified it and um, yeah I know Mill will love it and she'll look after it so yeah and it's hand painted like you've you've really got to take it that's taken somebody a lot of time to paint and I mean even the handle not just on the outside it's actually painted on the inside there as well it's got a lot of detail in it I'm just looking, there's two cards. The second card that's attached here is the care instru instructions and it is hand wash with warm water uh, only, not dishwasher safe, do not, so do not microwave, allow to air dry before putting away. So she's going to have to look after it. I mean, Mill and Beck don't own a dishwasher, so bonus. So, yep, purchase to that. And when I bought the pattern, uh-oh, I can hear the posting. 
I'm just waiting to see if the dog's going nuts. <coughs> see. That no, looks like they're going to be okay. Now, when I bought the uh, the dress pattern, the new dress pattern, I had a look on their website and picked up another couple of things. So I picked up some bellium, which is the stuff that you use for the neckline. So it came in a pack and you got black and white. So I got those. Uh, also, that's not really that exciting. Also from that place, they do a lot of these um, embroidered tags that say different things. Um, this is the one that I ended up get, buying, one of a kind, so it's got a whole heap of tags in there, embroidered tags, to put on the inside of your garments, your jumpers, anything like that. So I bought that, and I think uh, when I bought the last pattern, I bought some thread to go with the apricot coloured fabric that um, Julia had given me, and the, it was too vibrant, so I picked up some more cotton thread in a much paler peach colour, and that matches much better. So it looks white on the camera, but it is actually a peachy, peachy colour that matches very well. And then I bought some more journals because, you know, it's never enough um, and I found this lady on Etsy and she does a nice little journal and this was the one that appealed to me that I wanted to get just liked the colors on it I liked the imagery it's got watercolor paper in it it's got quite a lot of pages in it too it's all nicely strung together black on the back um, and I got this from Golden Ret Retriever Journals. So I bought that one and I had a quick look because they weren't overly expensive. It was the postage that was a bit more expensive. And so I this has also got watercolour paper in it, but I grabbed that one as well. I hope that's not blurry. That looks blurry to me, but I haven't got my glasses on, so... It's anybody's guess, but yeah, that's kind of cute with the little bunnies and I liked the colours of that, so I thought, and I've, I've got, in my mind, I've got an image of my journals all sort of, my watercolour journals all stacked up on my desk with my paints, you know. Dreamer! That, that uh, mug came with a nice little note too, which I'm going to put in and um, to Mill's present so she can have the note. But it says, thank you so much for your order. I appreciate your support. I hope your new mug brightens your day and brings you joy. If you have a moment, please take the time to leave a review on my website. And you should always do that. I always try to remember to do that. I've, even if I go back later, I've got a couple that I need to go back and leave reviews for, but try and leave reviews. And another kit that I bought off Etsy came packaged like this. And I bought this from a place called Little Quill Supplies. And this kit cost me $28. And what it is, it's a little kit and it's got everything in it that I need to do a bit of paper quilling, which... I don't think I've ever done before. I don't even know what some of this stuff's for. It comes with this little gadget. I've got to work out what to do with that. It's got a little pointy stick gadget. I've got a little uh, stencil on corkboard. And there's the paper to do the quilling, all packed up nicely in there. In fact, I think there's two packets. Yep, two packets of paper quilling. Or quilling paper, I should say. So different colours in those packs. And it came with a nice card. Thank you, Kathy, for supporting my, my small business. I hope you will enjoy your quilling 
journey with this basic quilling kit. Looking forward to seeing the projects. Happy quilling from Carmel and Little Cuties and Co. So that nice little card, handwritten card came in it. So that was nice. So all beautifully packaged and I'm looking forward to having a go and seeing what I can create. If you're interested, also on her Etsy shop, she's she makes some beautiful earrings that are all done with that, like the um, quilling. She sells lots of different kits, not just this kit. There's a lot, like you don't have to buy all the stuff. You can buy just the, the paper. She's got some really interesting things on her Etsy shop. So I'll link that in the show notes if you want to support that lady and see if there's anything in her shop that grabs your eye to keep you busy while we're in lockdown but that'll keep me busy actually it came with that too what's that let me see what that is oh that's a little little thing out of glue i just saw that sitting on the desk there so that all came in that kit so that was good that i'm happy with that purchase and as you know i'm looking at all the scrapbooking stuff at the moment so many interesting things so went to um this website and she's got some really nice things crafty divas i don't know if anybody knows of that shop but i didn't know about it but i stumbled across it and yeah I won't show you everything I'll just pick out a few things but I bought a few of these little books that have just got like interesting um, pages that you can cut up and little tags and things that you can make I mean look at that beautiful picture look at the colors in it that'd be a good yarn dyeing inspiration picture but in the back it's got like little cards and I got this one because it had all the painting things in it I won't go through every single one of these books otherwise we'll be here forever but I got that one I got that one and I like I make my Christmas cards every year and I thought I might get that one I think that it's got some nice different color pinky Christmas sort of vintage looking I might just show you one picture out of this because this has got some really nice pictures in it look at that nice paper so I got those but the main one that I went on to get, I saw a lady on YouTube, and I'm very easily influenced, I think we've all established that, and she used this paper, and she made a really nice um, journal with it out of a magazine, and I do intend to have a go at that. Just need to get a magazine. Magazines are like hen's teeth unless you buy one these days. You used to get them in the mail with catalogues and things. You don't even get that anymore. But this has got some really beautiful paper in it. Look at those pictures. So pretty. I love those colours. I love the pictures. There's lots of fox pictures in here too, which I also quite like. Um, squirrels. Look at that handsome fox there. So yeah, so I got that and I got um, just a few packs of these, just these labels, paintbrushes, art and crafty sort of slogans that I thought I could use in my journals. Like I said, I won't show you everything. There was some in that and I thought oh, I need to work out how I'm going to store these. And I also bought these, a few of these containers, and I thought that way I can store 
some bits in it and I liked that there's long enough so that you can still sort of poke around and find oh yeah that's what I want that's what I'm looking for rather than having everything stacked up where you can't really see it oh I just got a message through from my husband that said my car is going to be ready to be picked up tonight I don't know if I told you guys but somebody sideswiped my car a couple of weeks ago and it's been in the shop for the last week and a half having some repairs done on it so I got some die cuts sewing machine ones I thought that might make a good sewing machine journal more uh, like paintbrush paper type things tubes of paint for my art journals I got that one just because I thought it was a beautiful that's got like birds nests and birds and it's got all the pinky pinky type papers in it I haven't even opened these I don't want to open them I'm trying to find somewhere where I can put them first I also bought some different glue although I was watching a lady that that treasure books lady Rusty's right here at my chair and this was the glue she recommended so I asked my husband to go down and get me some from Bunnings you can get that glue she recommends that as the best glue for journaling as it doesn't deteriorate over time and it does a good job sticking but before I watched that I thought I might um, try some of these different glues so I got that glue where is it there it is got that one I'm set for glue is what I can tell you I got um, that glue which has got some pink glitter in I thought that might have been nice for the Christmas cards to do a little bit of embossing and things like that we're getting down to the bottom of things I also bought a few different tubes of these I haven't opened that one I have opened some of the other ones uh, let me see if I've got them handy to show you here they're actually liquid um, watercolor pigment so when you're doing your watercolor you could actually use these for watercolor painting I only bought three colors they're not that cheap um, but what I have actually seen people do is like using the dropper dropping directly onto their picture with the pigment to get that real splash of color and stuff so I'm interested to try those so I just bought the basic colors like green blue and um, a coffee brown color just to see what it was like and I think we're getting to the bottom of bits and pieces here some tiny tiny little baby paper clips and I also bought this stencil which I thought that'll be good for a few different things um, but I could also use that on my tea dyeing paper so that's what's in my hot and tasty pizza box that's what it came in <laughs> I've got hot and tasty craft bits instead which I'm happy with so I think that's everything guys I'm pretty sure that's everything uh, I've got a fair old pile of stuff to clean up now but that's good uh, some of these things I'll be able to really put away now and clear the decks ready to get busy making stuff for the next podcast so I hope everyone is safe especially considering the new lockdown I hope everyone is well and I hope everyone is enjoying their time at home doing whatever it is you like doing whether it's gardening or cooking or crafting or a bit of DIY whatever you like doing I hope you're enjoying it uh, and I hope you're sleeping well nothing like a good night's sleep few and far between for me but I have been sleeping quite well um, since I was recovering from having the flu so that's one good thing so look after yourselves and leave me some comments about what you're up to during the lockdown and I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye!